Welcome so much to Brave New World and happy 451st birthday to William Shakespeare today. This is Brave New World is a new play written and performed specifically on Zoom and for Zoom by Emily Carding and Miguel Perez. Um, we've taken the liberal use of the words of William Shakespeare and then written original material to create a journey for the audience, that would be you, through one man's soul. As our live audience, we want you all to just relax and enjoy our collaboration, which is to reflect, the collaboration is to reflect on the strange times and grief that has been shared by all of us in the last few years while celebrating the emerging international creative collaborations, such as this play, Born of Adversity. So, without any further ado, I want you to relax and watch Brave New World. So, as we've seen, Every culture has its myths and stories about the soul's journey through various states before it reaches its final destination or home. Now, in some cases, that's final. In others, there can be an opportunity to return either through reincarnation or perhaps uh, guided by a psychopomp figure such as uh, the messenger god Mercury or the guiding torches of Hecate both featured in the tale of Persephone and her seasonal visitations to and from the other world. And while perhaps uh, many of us have lost touch with these beliefs and rituals, uh, echoes of them remain, and very often we encounter them in pop culture, you know, TV shows, movies, books, even video games. Uh, the Marvel superhero, Thor, though somewhat detached from uh, spiritual depth, still aspires to a place in Valhalla, the um, afterlife uh, for warriors who have died honorably in battle. And we even had uh, glimpses into the Egyptian afterlife in, um, in the recent series Moon Knight, also adapted from a Marvel comic. <laughs> Marvelous indeed, huh? <laughs> and of course, uh, the ancient Egyptians believed the soul or the Ba, which sometimes was pictured as taking the form of a bird in the afterlife, would face the negative confession, standing before the 42 judges of the underworld and denying a long list of sins before having their heart weighed against a feather. Now, is this where Douglas Adams got his famous answer 42 for the answer to the life? the universe and everything. <laughs> and and uh, a life that and life, the universe and and oh oh <laughs> I'm sorry I lost my I'm sorry, um, Douglas Adams uh, said that, I'm, I, I apologize, um, <laughs> he went away there for a moment, uh, whew. Oh, that was strange, no worries, no worries, um, so in closing, um, we have seen how different cultures around the world all have their intricate beliefs as to what happens to the soul after death. We have to theorize for ourselves, of course, because um, as William Shakespeare observed in his timeless study of grief and loss, Hamlet, death is the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. <laughs> Your Uncle Kenny isn't going to pop back and tell you how what it's like. <laughs> We've got to work it out for ourselves. I'm making the case here that death is a process. 
Mr. Butler, I have a question. I'm sorry. Mics and cameras are supposed to be off. You've talked about uh, many cultures and their beliefs. Well, what are your beliefs? What's your personal experience of death rituals? Uh, well, 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 I suppose it's just about time for, um, I'm sure, uh, sure, sure. Let's have some, some questions. Um, I can't see anything on the q and Mr. Butler, my question? I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, is anyone from the museum actually running this thing? Mr. Butler. Who are you? I'm here to help. Oh, thank heaven. I, you know, I'm terrible when it comes to tech matters. Um, mm. Are you with the museum? Well, what do I call you? Pan. Pan? Okay. Okay. And, and what pronouns do you prefer? Thank you for asking. Any. All. I am Pan. No. Hmm? <laughs> like the... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Greek god. Yeah. Yes, yes. No goat hoofs, though. No? No. But back to my question. Of course. Uh, well, I, I, I guess we ought to do questions. Um, you asked about... Uh, Death rituals? Yes. <laughs> yes, death rituals. Well, yes, I have. I've studied quite a few. Um, growing up in an Irish-Mexican family, I have had firsthand experience of some deeply interesting rituals. Uh, waking the dead, for one, and uh, Dia de los Muertos. What did you find interesting about them? Well, both rely on the power of memory and language and art to cement the departed in the ongoing narrative that's played out by those who remain behind. Language and art. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I would argue that language is art. Well, that's a very interesting point, Pan, but, but I have to say that language is not really in and of itself an art Form. Rather, it's a, a vehicle, a, a platform. If you look at more than just death rituals, and if you expand your view of what a ritual really is, you will find that use of language is more than just craft. It's, it's a tool. Language is a tool for conveying. It's an instrument. Language is an instrument for making... Ideas. Magic. <laughs> Magic? Magic, yes. And ideas, but they really are the same things. So. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Pan. I am. Well, um, thanks for contributing to the conversation. And it doesn't seem that uh, anyone from the museum is coming back, so... Um... You can't go yet, Mr. Butler. Alejandro. I'm sorry, but that's all we have time for. Thank you all so much. You can't go. Oh, that's very nice of you, Pan. And maybe the museum will invite me back. Thanks again. I... How do I? There's usually a little red button to end the. Come. Should I just close the window? <laughs> well, that. Uh... Let's away. Pan, are, are you able to close the uh, the the session? Pan. Oh, I guess I'll just uh, shut it down. I guess. I don't understand. <laughs> Why can't I? We two alone will sing like birds of the cage. When thou dost ask me blessing, I'll kneel down and ask of thee forgiveness. I'm sorry, what? How are you doing this? A feather will turn the scale. 
What is happening? Are there balance here to weigh the flesh? The scale, the, the flesh. Oh, wonder. How many goodly creatures are there here? I, I, I don't, wait, 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 wait. Um, oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Brave new world. Um, Huxley? No. Um, uh, Shakespeare. MIT. Uh huh. Okay. Brave world. That's uh, the Tempest, which is the first and the fourth. Here we are. Oh, wonder. How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. It is new to thee. Speak the speech. Yes. Speak the speech, I pray you. Um, which, which speech? Give me a clue. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you. I don't. The speech? Speak the speech, I pray you. I pray you, yes. As I pronounced it to you. As I pronounced it to you. Trippingly on the tongue. Trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it, as many of your players do, I had as leaf the town crier had spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand, thus, but use all gently, for in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, the whirlwind of passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it Smooth. Ah, oh, it offends me to the soul to hear a robustious periwig painted fellow tear a passion to tatters. To very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. Pray you avoid it. <laughs> Be thou a spirit of health or a goblin damned. Be thy intents wicked or charitable? Teach me, dear creature, lay open to my earthy gross conceit, smothered in error, feeble, shallow, weak, the folded meaning of your words' deceit. No, lad, teach me. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die? To sleep. No more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep. A chance to dream. Ah, uh, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that gives an next calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong. The proud man's contumely. The pangs of disprised love. The law's delay. Insolence of office. And the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under the weary life? But that the dread of something after death. The undiscovered country, from whose born no traveller returns. Puzzles the will. And makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with a pale cast of thought. 
And enterprises of great pith and moment in this regard, their currents turn awry. And lose the name of action. Mark me. I will. Let's talk of graves, of worms and epitaphs. Make dust our paper and with rainy eyes write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills, and yet not so. For what can we bequeath, save our deposed bodies to the ground? Lord, Lord, methought, what a pain it was to drown. What dreadful noise of waters in mine ears. What ugly sights of death within mine eyes. Methought I saw a thousand fearful wrecks, ten thousand men that fishes gnawed upon, wedges of gold, great anchors, heaps of pearl, inestimable stones, unvalued jewels, all scattered in the bottom of the sea. Some lay in dead men's skulls, and in those holes where eyes did once inhabit, there were crept, as twere in scorn of eyes, reflecting gems, which wooed the slimy bottom of the deep and mocked the dead bones that lay scattered by. Aye, nothing can we call our own but death and that small model of the barren earth which serves as paste and cover to our bones. What's happening, Pan? I feel... What's happening? Why do I know these words? This is, what's happening? Where are these words coming from? Within. What? Within you, Alejandro, through you, around you, above, beneath, near and far, to a height and depth beyond measure. Please, I don't understand. <laughs> Tarry a moment. All will be well. You have naught to fear and so much to gain. No, it, it, is this some sort of hack? Are you hacking my computer? Are you hacking my mind? That's it, isn't it? You're some, some sort of pirate, right? Anonymous, that crowd. Well, I'm not gonna play your game, okay? I'm shutting this down. I don't know if anyone at the museum can hear me, but but you better get your IT types or your cyber ninjas or whatever on the case because because your whole network is compromised, and I will call you on a landline when my land when my laptop is in the shop. They bore him barefaced on the beer. Hey, non nonny, nonny, hey, nonny. And in his grave rained many a tear. Fare you well, my dove. And will he not come again? And will he not come again? No, no, he is dead. Go to thy deathbed. He will never come again. His beard was as white snow all flaxen was his pole he is gone he is gone and we cast away more god a mercy on his soul and of all christian souls i pray god god be with you God's sake. Let us sit upon the ground and tell sad stories of the death of kings. How some have been deposed, some slain in war, some haunted by the ghosts they have deposed, some poisoned by their wives, some sleeping killed, all murdered. Or shall we stab him as he sleeps? Now, then he will say to it uncowardly when he wakes. 
When he wakes, why fool, he shall never wait till the judgment day. Why, then he will say we stabbed him sleeping. Oh, the urging of that word judgment hath brought a kind of uh, remorse in me. What, art thou afraid? Not to kill him, uh, having a warrant for it, but to be damned for killing him, from which no warrant can defend us. I thought thou hadst been resolute. So I am. To let him live. Remember our reward when the deed is done. Soon he dies. I forgot the reward. Hawk, he steers, he steers. Shall I strike? No, 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 no. First, let's reason with him. What I tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death out out brief candle life is but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more it is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Time hath my lord a wallet at his back wherein he puts alms for oblivion, a great-sized monster of ingratitudes, and these scraps of good deeds past, which are devoured as fast as they are made, forgot as soon as done. Perseverance, dear my lord, keeps on her bright. To have done is to hang quite out of fashion, like a rusty nail in monumental mockery. Take the instant way, for time is like a fashionable host that slightly shakes his parting guest by the hand and with arms outstretched as he would fly, grasps in the comer. The welcome ever smiles, and farewell goes out, sighing. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. <laughs> Nobody marks you. <laughs> My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she had such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if you come then in her presence. Courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. And I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly, I love none. A uh, dear happiness to women! They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood. I am of your humour for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind. So some gentleman or other will escape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse than for such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer, but keep your way. In God's name, I have done. Oh, you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. Sweet saint, for charity, be not so cursed. Foul devil, for God's sake, hence, and trouble us not. For thou hast made the happy earth thy hell, filled it with cursing cries and deep exclaims. If thou delight to view thy heinous deeds, behold, this pattern of thy butcheries. Oh, gentlemen, see, see. Dead Henry's wounds open their congealed mouths and bleed afresh. Blush, blush, thou lump of foul deformity. For tis thy presence that exhales this blood from cold and empty veins where no blood dwells. Thy deed, inhuman and unnatural, provokes this deluge most unnatural. Oh, God, which this blood madest revenge his death. O oh, earth, which this blood drinks to revenge his death. 
either heaven with lightning strike the murderer dead, or earth gape open wide and eat him quick, as thou dost swallow up this good king's blood which his hell-governed arm hath butchered. Lady, you know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain! Thou knowest no law of God, nor man, no beast, so fierce, but no some touch of pity. But I know none, and therefore am no beast. Oh, wonderful, when devils tell the truth. More wonderful when angels are so angry. <sighs> Vouchsafe divine perfection of a woman, of these supposed evils, to give me leave, by circumstance, but to acquit myself. Vouchsafe! Diffused infection of a man for these known evils, but to give me leave by circumstance to curse thy cursed self. Fairer than can can name thee, let me have some patient leisure to excuse myself. Fairer than heart can think thee, thou canst make no excuse current but to hang thyself. By such despair I should accuse myself. And by despairing, shouldst thou stand excused? For doing worthy vengeance on thyself, which didst unworthy slaughter upon others. Say I slew them not. <laughs> Why then they are not dead. <laughs> but dead they are, and devilish slave by thee. I did not kill the husband. Why then he is alive. Nay, he is dead. Didst thou not kill this king? I grant ye. Dost grant me, hedgehog? Then God grant me too, thou mayst be damned for that wicked deed. Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The fitter for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven, but thou shalt never come. Let him thank me. That hoped to send him thither, for he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou, unfit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else, if you will hear me name it. <laughs> Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. <sighs> I'll rest beside the chamber where thou liest. So will it, madam, till I lie with you. Black night, or shade thy day and death thy life. Curse not thyself, fair creature, thou art both. I would I were to be revenged on thee. It is a quarrel most unnatural to be revenged on him that loveth you. Oh, it is a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him that slew my husband. He that bereft thee, lady of thy husband, did it to help thee to a better husband. His better doth not breathe upon this earth. He lives that loves thee better than he could. Where is he? Here. <coughs> Why dost thou spit at that? Would it were mortal poison for thy sake? Never came poison from so sweet place. Never hung poison on so foul a toad out of my sight. Thou dost infect my eyes. Thine eyes, sweet lady, have infected mine. Would well, they were basilisks to strike thee dead? If thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, lo, here I lend thee the sharp pointed sword, which if thou please to hide in this true bosom, to let the soul forth at Dorothy. I lay it naked to the deadly stroke, and humbly beg thee the death upon my knee. Take up the sword again, or take up me. Arise, dissembler. Though I wish thy death, I will not be the executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already. Tush, that was in thy rage. Speak it again, and even with the word, that hand which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths thou shall be an accessory. Would I knew thy heart. 
Tis figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. Then never was man true. Well, put up your sword. Say, then, my peace is made. That shall you know hereafter. But shall I live in hope? Well, then, I hope live so. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Oh, how much might the man deserve of me that would write her? Is there any way to show such friendship? Very even way. But no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office. But not yours. I'd have loved nothing in the world so well as you. It's not that strange. Uh, as, as, as strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I loved nothing so well as you, but, but, but believe me not. <laughs> And yet I lie not. I, I confess nothing. <laughs> or I deny nothing. I, uh, I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that thou, that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will he not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest. I love thee. <sighs> I thank God forgive me. <laughs> what offence, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I, I, I was about to protest I loved you. <laughs> and do it with all my heart. I love you with so much of my heart, none is left to protest. <laughs> Come, bid me do anything for thee. <laughs> Kill Claudio. <laughs> No, no, not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Oh, Terry, sweet Beatrice. I'm gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, pray you let me go. Uh, Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonoured my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man that what bear her in hand until they come to take hands, and then with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancour, oh God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Talk with a man out the window, a proper me, saying. Me, but Beatrice. Sweet, hear. She is wronged. She is slandered. She is undone. Princes, counties, surely a princely testimony, a goodly count, count comfort, a sweet gallant, surely. Oh, that I were a man for his sake, or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into courtesies. Valour into compliment, and men are only turned into tongue, and trim ones too. He is now as valiant as Hercules, that only tells a lie, and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing, therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul the Count Claudio hath wrong wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. 
I will kiss your hand and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so, farewell. That was the moment you knew how little you knew. How truly knowing is impossible. Knowing is a fantasy. How did love go? They met, they fell in love, they wed, had a child, lived life, chased some dreams, set other dreams aside. He's sitting at a desk, in a place full of desks, doing a job that pays the requisite amount, wondering how you got there. You're just there, and there, and there, punching keys waiting for the requisite amount to arrive. Text message vibrates, and the world just comes apart and floats away like ashes blown in a dry breeze. And you're naked, sitting at a desk in a forest of desks, and the future you're pushing a boulder uphill for? All gone. All gone. All gone? What does I've found someone else truly mean? What does it mean to, to press send and transmit those little words that disturb the universe? Your reflection in the screen smeared with tears and finger grease is just a naked skull, pink and moist, flashing a toothy smile that says, the joke's on you, pal. The joke's on you. Pray you now, forget and forgive. How? I don't know how to do that. Speak the speech, I pray you. No. As I pronounced it to you. No. Pronuncia el discurso. I can't. Tartalan. Please. Speak to read. But. Come, give us a taste of your quality. Oh, 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 it offends my soul to hear a robustious and very painted fellow tear a passion to tatters. Aye, but to die and go we know not where, to lie in cold obstruction and to rot. This sensible warm motion to become a kneaded clod and the delighted spirit to bathe in fiery floods or to reside in thrilling region of thick ribbed eyes to be imprisoned in the viewless winds and blown with restless violence round about the pendant world or to be worse than worst of those that lawless and in certain thought imagine howling tis too horrible the weariest and most loathed worldly life that age, ache, penury and imprisonment can lay on nature is a paradise to what we fear of death. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Hellgate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? There's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Come at time. Have you napkins to know about you? Here, you'll knock for it. <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Hey. Here's an equivocator that would swear in both scales against either scale, who committed treason for God's sake, yet could not equivocate heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, knock. 
Who's there? Faith, here's an English tailor come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Oh, come in, tailor. Here you may rust your goose. <sighs> no, but this place is too cold for hell. I'll devil portrait no further. If we are marked to die, we are an hour to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honour. God's will, I pray thee wish not one man more. By Jove, I am not covetous for gold, nor care I who doth feed upon my cost. It yearns me not if men my garments wear, such outward things dwell not in my desires. But if it be a sin to covet honour, I am the most offending soul alive. No faith, my cause wish not a man from England. God's peace, I would not lose so great an honour as one man more, methinks, would share from me for the best hope I have. Oh, do not wish one more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made, and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when the day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbours and say tomorrow is saint crispian then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say these wounds i had on crispin's day old men forget yet all shall be forgot but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day then shall our names familiar in his mouth as household words Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Salisbury and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England, now abed, shall think themselves accursed, they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day. Gods, today stand friendly that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days to age. But since the affairs of men rest still uncertain, let's reason with the worst that may befall. If we do lose this battle, then is this the very last time we shall speak together? What are you determined to do? even by the rule of that philosophy by which I did blame Cato for the death which he did give himself. I know not how, but I do find it cowardly and vile, for fear of what might fall, so to prevent the time of life, arming myself with patience to stay the providence of some high powers that govern us below. Then, if we lose this battle, you are contented to be led in triumph through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Think not, thou noble Roman, that ever Brutus will go bound to Rome. He bears too great a name. <laughs> but this same day must end that work the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, our everlasting farewell take. Forever... And forever. Farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why, then this parting was well made. Forever and forever.
Farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true this parting was well made. You emptied the house completely that day. When the packing and storing was finished, he got in his car. He wasn't coming back. It was the end. Don't do this. They said you were selfish. Keeping him close, stopping him from being his own man. You had no defence. So the house was sold. Emptied. Drained. Hung up and dried and pressed into the book of memories written on your soul. It hurts too much to remember. The evening prior. The night of his 26th birthday. You slept on the floor of the last place you were to call home together. You worked together all that day, sweeping away the detritus of a family, now a memory. You started the engine. Are you coming back after this last round to your mom's? I don't think so. Well then. This is it. I know. Dry your tears, Dad. This isn't goodbye. I, I know. And after a moment, he put the dinged-up sedan in reverse, back down the driveway, and set off on the way to his future. He stopped and pressed his right palm against the driver's side window. Fingers splayed, his flesh pressed white against the glass. It was a, a wave, a salute, an admission of the import of the moment. In that second, I saw superimposed on his face, uh, the tiny newborn with, with hair on his shoulders, the funny little toddler who liked to play super dark under a blanket, the feisty infant who would not go to sleep the sweet-faced 11-year-old in rumpled blue pajamas, the petulant teen with hair down to his waist, the wicky, brilliant young man who's always up for a debate. He drove off, slowly, with his eyes on you, and you wept, and walked through the empty house a final time, surprised at the way your footsteps echoed. You sat on the floor and wept even more, but... Wherefore, you were unsure. I can't do this anymore. I can't. I'm a kind of spur. Please, stop this. I, I, it hurts too much. Why, how now? No greater heart in thee. Live a little. Comfort a little. Cheer thyself a little. No more. Speak the speech. No. I pray you. No more. <laughs> These words are like daggers in mine ears. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in sea and one on shore. To one thing constant. Never. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. Mm. For such as I am, all true lovers are. Unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. Mm. How does thou like this tune? It uh, gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. <laughs> thou dost speak masterly, my life upon it. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favour that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favour. <laughs> what kind of woman is Oh, of your complexion. Uh, she's not worth thee, then. What years of faith? About your years, my lord. Oh, too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself, so wears she to him. So sways she level to her husband's heart, for boy, however we do praise ourselves, 
Our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. Think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than myself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come, come, come. That song we had last night, huh? Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks in her, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Sith, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There's no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much they lack retention, alas. Their love may be called appetite. No motion of the liver, but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment and revolt. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man, as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should see your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love. But let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat, like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. 
Is this not love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will for. Still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister for her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house. And all the brothers too, and, and yet I know not. The poor world is almost 6,000 years old. And in all this time, there was not any man died in his own person, but illicit in a love course. Troilus had his brains dashed out with a Grecian club, yet he did what he could to die before, and he is one of the patterns of love. Leander, he would have lived many a fair year, though Hero had turned none, if it had not been for a hot midsummer night. For, good youth, he went but forth to wash him in the house pond, and being taken with a cramp, was drowned. And the foolish chroniclers of that age found it was Hero of Sestos. But these are all lies. Well, men have died from time to time, and worms have eaten them. But not for love. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint cold fear that thrills through my veins, that almost freezes up the heat of life. My dismal scene, I must needs act alone. Come, vile. What if this mixture does not work at all? Shall I not then be stifled in the vault to whose mouth no healthsome air breathes in, or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place as in a vault, an ancient receptacle where, for these many hundred years, the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed? Or if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed, with all these hideous fears and madly play with my forefather's joints and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone as with a club dash out my desperate brains. Here's to my love. Oi, she to be buried in Christian burial that willfully seeks her own salvation. I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight, the crown of her saddle on her, and finds it Christian burial. How can that be? Unless she drowned herself for her own defence. It is found so. Well, it must be, say, offendendo. It cannot be else. There lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act, and an act hath three branches. It is to act. To do, to perform, our oh, girl. She drowned herself wittingly. Nay, but hear you, Goodman Delbert. Eh, eh, eh. Give me leave, give me leave, right? Here lies the water. Yeah. Good. Here stands the man. Good. Right. If the man go to this water and drown himself, it is willy nilly, he goes. Mark you that. Right. But it. If the water come to him and drown him, he drowns not himself. Oh, gal, he that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. What is this law? Ah, marry, is it? Crowner's quest law. The other truth on it. If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out of Christian burial. Well, there you see it. And the more pity that great folk should have countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than their even Christian. Eh, come, my spade. There is no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers and grave makers. They hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? Well, he was the first that ever bore arms. Why, oh, he had none. What, thou heathen? How dost thou understand the scripture? Eh? 
uh, the, the scripture says, Adam digged. How could he dig without arms? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, I've got another question to thee. If thou answerest me, not to the purpose, confess thyself. Go to. What is he that builds stronger than either the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The gallows maker. Mm. For that frame outlives a thousand tenants. Mm, I like that bit well. Yeah, in good faith. Yeah, the gallows does well. But how does it well? Huh? Mm. As well to those that do in. Now, thou dost still to say the gallows is built stronger than the church. <sighs> oh, girl, the gallows may do well to thee. Mm. To it again, come. Who builds stronger than a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? Oh, tell me that, an unyoke. Mary, I can tell. To it. Yes, I cannot tell. Oh, cudgel thy brains no more about it, for your dull ass will not mend his pace with beating. And when you are asked this question next, say, a grave maker. Hmm? Houses that he makes last till doomsday. When shall I come to the top of that same hill? You do climb it now. Look how we labor. It thinks the ground is even. Horrible steep. Hark, do you hear the sea? No, surely. Why then your other senses grow imperfect by your eyes anguish. So may it be indeed. I think thy voice is altered, and thou speakst in better phrase and matter than thou didst. You are much deceived. In nothing am I changed but in my garments. Yeah, thinks you are better spoken. Come on, sir. Here's the place. Stand still. How fearful and dizzy tis to cast one's eyes so low. The crows and chuffs that wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles. Halfway down hangs one that gathers sampire of dreadful trade. Methinks he seems no bigger than his head. The fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice, and yon tall anchoring bark diminished to her cock. A cock, a boy, almost too small for sight. The murmuring surge that on the unnumbered idle pebble chafes cannot be heard so high. I look no more. Let's my brain turn and the deficient sight topple down headlong. Set me where you stand. Give me your hand. You are now within a foot of the extreme verge. For all beneath the moon would I not leap upright. Let go my hand. Go thou further off. Bid me farewell and let me hear thee going. Now fare you well, good sir. Oh, you mighty gods. This world I do renounce. And in your sight patiently shake off my great affliction. If I could bear it longer and not fall to quarrel with thy great opposeless wills, the snuff and loathed part of my nature should burn itself out. Now, fellow, Fare thee well. Like as the waves make forth the pebbled shore, so do our minutes hasten to their end. Each changing place with that which goes before in sequent toil, all for which to contend. Nativity, once in the main of light, crawls to maturity, or with being crowned, crooked ellipses against his glory fight, and time that gave doth now his gift confound. Time doth transfix the flourish set on youth, and delves the parallels in beauty's brow, feeds on the rarities of nature's truth, and nothing stands 
but for his scythe, the mow. And yet, to times in hope, my verse shall stand, praising thy worth, despite his cruel hand. Now the hungry lion roars, and the wolf behowls the moon, whilst the heavy ploughman snores, all with weary task foredone. Now the wasted brands do glow, whilst the screech owl, screeching loud, puts the wretch that lies in woe in remembrance of a shroud. Now it is the time of night, that the graves, all gaping wide, every one lets forth his sprite in the churchway paths to glide. And we fairies that do run by the triple Hecate's team from the presence of the sun following darkness like a dream. Now, ah, frolic. Earth's increase, poison plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines and clustering bunches growing, Plants with goodly burden bowing. Spring come to you at the farthest, in the very end of harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. Ceres' blessing, so. What is this place? This is the forest of Arden. This is Illyria. The tower. Athens. Burnham Wood. The Stygian Plain. Verona. Venice. Bohemia. East Cheap. This land of such dear souls. This dear, dear land. Oh, brave new world. So we'll be taking just a like coming back to say some questions and answers. Thank you so much to our audience for listening to our brave new world. There's Emily, and we've got Alejandro yes. coming back. And let's I see, put my let's head see in too. Faces, if you, you want like to let us see your faces, thank you so much, everybody, for 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 coming, being there. <laughs> um, I don't know how long. I'm going to say it's three years of this, and I still don't know really what to say. Um, thanks <laughs> for. Hi, Bon. Existing. <laughs> oh my gosh! Hello. Uh, oh, yeah, oh Shelly! Hey, 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 there's a bunch of people I know. Oh, Ruth! Oh, lots of people! Yay! Thank well, you let for me coming. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we did say questions. If you had any questions, you're certainly welcome to unmute and ask a question yeah, or just, just make a comment. Chat. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Sarah, can you hear me? This is yes. Shelley. Yes, hi, Shelley. Uh, first of all, unrelated, I could never hear it is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury without adding our mm. rewrite, which was even more of a bold rewrite, but I won't waste your time with that. Uh, I love this, and I applaud uh, all the work on, on the page and on the screen. How do you ultimately see this being performed? Will it? You know, mm. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there have been many discussions about this, and I, and and what's interesting about it is, like Pierre Gint, which was not written to be put on the stage, 
Uh, it can be done in many ways, but do you ever see it, you know, performed in that traditional way? We have chatted about it, that's, haven't we? That's an interesting question. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, 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 the initial intent was to, to create a Zoom piece. You know, we were in the throes mm. of, the, of the pandemic and we thought, well, let's make a Zoom play. And um, right, because we've we done like loads of Shakespeare online, which isn't written to be performed on Zoom. So we're like, well, what if we write something specifically for this medium, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I don't know. I think because it's on camera, I, I think it, it might have another life as as just a pure film rather than a, a live Zoom performance. Um, <laughs> well, I can actually get I, as, as it is right now behind me. I, I had some technical good Zoom issues. Yeah. The, the, the wonderful thing about film would be yeah, that we can, you, you, you have so much more creative choice and freedom and, and, and perhaps a bit more creativity in terms of what's, what's happening. Yeah. But, um, yeah. A bigger, a, a bigger palette to, to paint from. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Beautiful work. I'm not trying to negate what you what you accomplished today. I'm just. No, but you're right. We did talk yeah. about it. We we do, we did oh, keep yeah. having we... chats about how we'd like to do a version of it on stage, maybe one day, because we're desperate to. We haven't even met. In We've person. Never met in person. Because <laughs> the girl's in LA and I'm in the UK. Um, so yeah, we we maybe really want to do something in person together at some point. And we did. We were just talking the other day about. A cat mm. has appeared and I'm instantly distracted. Hello, Lisa's cat. Um, Multimedia piece. <laughs> yeah, I think it was just a couple of days ago, Miguel, mm. when you said, how about, you know, a film version of this one day? Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like to do a film version, but like an art, an art film, not, not a, something oh, that yeah. doesn't, that isn't so insistent on narrative. Kitty! Or oh my God! Something because Sorry. it's got enough. <laughs> it's got a non-narrative thing going, so I think. I, Oh, sorry, Vic Victoria and Michael just held up. That was Captain Plasma. It was. Oh my God, I love <laughs> Captain Plasma so much. I, I, this is, I'm sorry, every time somebody presents a kitty or a dog or any kind of cute, <laughs> I'm distracted. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> look at her. <gasps> Yeah. So fluffy. I can't. There eat. was a question in the chat. There was a uh -oh, question. Oh, there's another oh, kitty. <laughs> okay, let me look at the chat. I haven't even looked at the chat. What no, question the question you... was just to, the, how, to tell how it started, how you guys came up with this idea, which I thought, well, that's a nice little story, too. Oh, gosh, yes, it is. Go ahead, Em. Me? Okay. How, how did this... Yeah, you do it. You were there. Well, we, no, well, we, we, can both, we can both interrupt each other and just. <laughs> All right. You can well, yeah. start. You Go take on. the lead on this one. Oh, right. oh I'm, you want me to do it? Okay. Well, you, you take the you, lead on this. It's your one. fault. You started it. Okay. Now, basically, I just I I, I reached. We we were, we had just done the show. Must go online. We we had done Hamlet. M was just brilliant as Claudius, and you know, and I I held my water as as the ghost. You and, were um, phenomenal. Shut shut I, up. You were brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I reached out to Anne and I said, you know, let's let's do something. Let's do something together. I want to work with you. And um, we uh, we we started just we said, OK, let's just get a whole bunch of different Shakespeare pieces that we like and that we want to do. And let's put them all together in a in a in a document and see if we can piece it together into something. And, um, yeah. and, and then so we started, started doing off. that. And then... we, 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 yeah. we, we sort of collaborate. We, we sort of would you choose some two hand a bit and I'll, I'll choose some dialogues and we'll see what we got and then we started to piece this quite it was like a tribute to show must go online initially but it was like quite mm -hmm. a jokey mm -hmm. framework where do you remember that the the original framework yeah. was that um there was yeah, an alien was, uh... there was an alien being that had been watching the show must yeah, go online yeah, that's right and that was its understanding of human <laughs> culture so it thought humans only and communicate by shakespeare what... Yeah, and it was like, oh, I want, to, I want to talk to it's that one because I like that yeah. one. You know, that one does the words well, and and <laughs> and the whole framework was like it's quite jokey sci-fi storyline about understanding humanity mm -hmm. through Shakespeare, but it's like an alien thing. And then it just, it just like because we've been working on this for so long on and off between like all the other stuff oh. we've been doing, and yeah. sometimes months would go by, and then we would like come back to it. 
it's yeah. slowly evolved into like this exploration of the human journey after death and the, the sort of exploration of a life after life and how you leave the the weight of what you've just experienced behind and move on and what what could that be what could that look like um i think that was that was after we had a the idea of of a man who was in a in a coma but he only responded when he heard shakespeare and so then the clinicians started using shakespeare to communicate with him so that's when we started an getting... audio podcast that was your that was one thought, yeah. wasn't it? To do it as an audio thing. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was a yeah, and, that. But that was when we started yeah, getting yeah, yeah. into somebody's head, and, st and and then that's when, that's when we found our way into this piece, which yeah. is really, I really like this piece. I like it. I like the form it's it's ended up in. I think it, I could I think it could be longer and more more intricate, but as it is right now, I think it's a nice little zoom. Play. It's it's a thing in and of itself, and it might be a starting point for something other than that but mm -hmm. as a med as it's almost like a meditation or an exploration or an experiment rather than a traditional play but i it's art you know i i, I, I like it it's making art yeah. from, from words just as it, it says in the beginning language is art and um and and very much here, a tribute here. to both both of us just love shakespeare and we just like i like using it as you know raw material and um we both really enjoyed that process. Yeah. Did that answer the question? I can't remember what it was now. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that was, I, yeah, that was a little about how we devised it. Yeah, and just another, another question very, from very, Dave. very calmly and, and casually over years. Sometimes every week, and then there'd be gaps of months, and then we'd come back and tinker with it again. And it, yeah, just it's really evolved over a very, very long time. Yeah. So Dave asks, is there anything we ultimately had to cut that you wish you could have kept? Did you kill your darlings? We did certainly make cuts. We did. It's a nice question. The yeah. Mackers. The Mackers, yeah. We had to. We yeah. just thought it was getting too long. It didn't really, there were, there were scenes that we just enjoyed, like one, yeah, a bit from, from Macbeth that we cut those. Um, yeah. And some of the longer monologues got chunk, chunks cut out to keep it more concise. We're like, where where does it need to be here and where is it just being a bit self-indulgent now we're just enjoying yeah. ourselves and is it is, is, is it dragging a bit um so we did we killed our darlings because we, we yeah it's difficult <laughs> but it was ultimately I'm surprised we, did, we never did an oberon and titania we never even entertained an oberon and titania oh i feel the peace yeah. We, there was one point where I, was t I got very excited and I, I just didn't spend, I didn't dive into it deeply enough. I got excited about the idea of it being the alchemical journey. And then I wanted to put in all the worlds of sage and we we're going to break mm -hmm. it up with all the worlds of stage. And, and that never happened either. Mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. we just ended up with something we were happy with. And they were like, actually, well, maybe we don't need the framework of all the worlds of stage and the seven stages of yeah. man and all that stuff. But there's a lot of ideas that got thrown around that didn't get used that would Maybe. Well, you know, I, I think with, with as with abstract art, you know, the, the tendency is for the onlooker to to impose whatever sense of narrative they possess when they come before mm -hmm. it, you know, and, you know, and there's a very loose narrative here, but I think folks will just fill in the gaps. I'm sure you all were filling in all kinds of gaps as you were. <laughs> as I hope were that witnessing it, also, by the way, it's just lovely to see all your faces. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, having a moment let's see your tummy victoria hi victoria show us the belly oh my oh. god look at this oh. how, much knew that <laughs> how much longer how much longer guys six weeks six weeks six weeks wow. officially he's come in above the the weight percentile every time so yeah. it could really be any moment yeah, i'm surprised good. this uh this performance didn't make her water break <laughs> how are you feeling that would have been something. Just enormous and tired. But I, other than that, I'm fine. She was <laughs> under. I remember that. <laughs> you oh you are gosh. glowing. You're beautiful. You're so full of life right now. Well, you always are, but especially. <laughs> yeah, you look wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. So, and I'm now getting distracted by wonderful friends, but it's, it's lovely to see all of you. What was I saying? What did I start oh, to a say? Special, 
Can I just special thanks to to Victoria and her company for letting oh, yes. us use? Well, I did ask. I asked for permission the other day in a WhatsApp message, and I didn't get a reply. So I, I just did a Captain Kirk and used it anyway. Sorry, so I hope that's all right. Oh, I finally <laughs> sent you a back. I'm so sorry. Yes, of course you had permission. <laughs> I didn't see a reply. So I was like, oh, it'll probably be fine. Um, just <laughs> the moment I started singing, Victoria was like, "They're using the song. They like, said they would. Like, they said they would do this. I just, yay. So yeah, that's yeah, such a beautiful song. Yes. So beautiful. I think that I was. I yeah, started was... to say something, and then I got distracted by all of your faces and Victoria and Michael and Annabelle's here and Peter's here. Peter, happy sure it was birthday, Peter. Something that would have changed our lives. Um, we we're all shiny objects. I understand. <laughs> Does anybody remember what I started to say? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, fuck it. It was going to be very clever, I know. It was good. It was going to be oh. so wise and so insightful, and um, it would have been yeah. so profound. Are, Emily. I think you, you were are. talking about things that you wanted to include but didn't, I'm and and then I and, started uh, talking about the possibility of it being the alchemical journey. To me, it felt yeah. very much like the Orphic journey, but that yeah. might just be. Um, and then yeah. I said that, and then I had another thought, and then I don't think I started to voice it. And I just got to the side. Uh, no, look at all of you. I just wanted to hug you all. And um, <laughs> somebody else talk now. Excellent. Maybe, maybe ask if there's anybody else who has a question or would like to make a comment before we before we finish up. Although it's so much fun to see everybody. Hi, Kathleen. I sneaked in there. Yes, I'm so glad you watched. Oh, I know what I was about to say. Sorry, I, well, it wasn't very interesting, actually. I, I was just going to, it, it was in addition to what Miguel said um, before I got distracted by everybody, just that I I feel like this is, and I hope that it is something that we can just present and hand it over and then people can find their own journeys in it. So you find your own interpretation of it and any interpretation is valid. We're not going to sit here and say, well, that's not what's happening. That's not what it is. <laughs> It's like a meditative experience that you t is personal to you when you take it into yourself, if that's not a bunch of pretentious wank. I mean, it might be, but that's what I think. <laughs> right, sorry, yes, any more questions or observations or greetings or musings or anything? I mean, out of interest, uh I loved the compilation of all the different bits of Shakespeare. It came together so nicely. I was wondering like how how the Shakespeare choices came together, like which bits you started with. And I know it's kind of similar to in questions that's already been asked, but Yeah, no, it was like three years ago when we started. Two years ago. Well, you know, I I think the initially, I think the initial collection of pieces that eventually became this piece. I mean, it was just, I think it really was just actor's vanity. You know, I've always wanted to do that speech. Or, oh, I think that speech would sound really good on him, you know. And, oh, you know. But we chose bits for each other as well, if you remember, because I was like, I really want to hear you do Juliet. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. look at, like, unconventional castings and things we would never get to do. So it's like, I really want to see what Miguel does with Juliet, and I love what you did with it. Um, oh, thank you. That, but, uh, that was originally yeah, much so... longer as well than got... Oh, yeah, I had to cut it because... Well, we because what happened once once we finally found this this over overarching idea, this premise of of a man going through the process of dying, then it became easy to to make the necessary cuts and to make the necessary additions. We added uh, thanks to uh, to Sarah, we added the the blessing and the sonnet late, mm -hmm. but it served the story really well. And so, and, we, um, we worked and, on it for quite a while before we got Sarah involved and then we were like we really need another creative mind in here now to come in and mm -hmm. give us an outside eye shake it up bring in their input and Sarah's just you know got a brilliant mind um as well and so then the three of us over the last few months have finished it yeah. up to this I mean I don't know whether it's it's finished finished this is like here we are this is a version of it um there was things that were supposed to happen with as you saw Miguel's background continued to shift I had gone I spent hours editing background videos for both of us that shifted along with the scenes and then mine refused to work it just refused <laughs> to go beyond a certain point and like right up to like half an hour before the performance and I was like let me try this let me try this and nothing would do so I was just like 
okay i will be in the void and you can i will take you on this journey and your background will go through the journey but yeah of course that's, that's what we were thinking all along yeah so there's still things to hone that we would like to fix um yeah. but we were so happy to be able to share this with you and on Thank shakespeare's you. birthday on shakespeare's birthday yeah brilliant timing birthday, happy birthday will wherever you are happy birthday william shakespeare yes <laughs> Folks, I just finished reading Hamnet last night, so I I felt as though you just uh, laid this right in front of me, just as the perfect segue to just you know endlessly looking at thinking about death in there, and just wow, it's, so that just felt delicious. Oh, thank you. I think it's it's something we you know it's the one thing that connects all of us that we all are going to have in common and western society particularly doesn't like to look it in the face and we've all i think one way or another for these last few years particularly looked looked it in the face so what's mm -hmm. our journey with that how mm -hmm. can we explore mm -hmm. the art and and poetry and and the soul of of that of what may or may not continue Absolutely. and how and how does shakespeare help us with that mm -hmm. Um, there was a lot, a lot to explore, and yeah. 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 maybe maybe there's there's more. Um... Lovely chatting friend Dave asks, well, "Did you enjoy the grave digger scene as much as it looked like you did?" <laughs> I was saying that's the first time I've got through that scene without making myself corpse. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just like fun. how ridiculous is that every time <laughs> every time we've done it i've done this stupid stuff that's i've not just made myself because it's so stupid i just made myself i actually i'm really <laughs> relieved to actually finally get through that scene without making myself i don't know whether anybody else enjoyed it but we were having, <laughs> we were having a blast oh. no it's it's a riot i mean you're laughing at it that's that's right up there with the Pyramus and Thisbe scene for just being a laugh riot. I love that scene. You know, and it always gets laughs. And for that play, what a, what a perfect time to start getting some laughs or to get a few laughs, you know, just before the, the final spiral to mm. You know, mm. all the corpses on the, on the stage. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, he knew what he was doing. He'll do, <laughs> he'll do, he'll do pretty well. Yeah, the guy could write. He'll, yeah, he knew what he was doing. <laughs> Gosh, this is wonderful. I'm so glad you all came and it's, saw us. It's, 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 I don't this on this. This was fun. Oh, well, how wonderful Favorite to part. finally share this after so much tinkering. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had, yeah. oh, it's been such a lovely process. What are we going to do next? Mm -hmm. We can't just stop. That's, no, we have to continue. We'll, have, we'll find something to do. If you have suggestions, you know, call it out, call it out like at an Post improv off. show. You know, and we'll, <laughs> and we'll spend There's another three idea. years. There's an idea. Yeah, what next? <laughs> what next, lads? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think, I mean, I think uh, we could, with, with this company of actors, we could do a really nifty Zoom version of Pajama Game, right? <laughs> <laughs> got, I can see it. <laughs> it will work. <laughs> see. Good. Well, is that is, is that is is, is is anybody Any, from the does museum? Does anybody else have anything to? Of course, you're so quiet. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, well we can thank you. Up and say that's for thank you so 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 much for coming. Bravo to the actors and uh, thank you again for being such a lovely audience. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Sarah.